Hello, I'm Tommy Mesa, and I play cello. Tommy. Hey. <laughs> hey. Um, here we are in Keene, New Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, and um, look, we just met a couple days ago. We did. And you yeah. also just met this cello a couple days maybe yep. before that. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So about about a week ago. Wow. So like totally brand new instrument for you. Yeah. So this is a little unusual. Can you tell us a little bit about this cello or where you are with cellos in general? Yeah. Um, well, I'm now realizing that this bow is really unnecessary. You want me to hold your bow? <laughs> you can hold my bow. Ooh, okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, so this cello uh, is on loan uh, to me uh, by Teresio, and it's, uh, it's, it's what is it, Giulio Gigli. Giulio Gigli. Gigli. Gigli, right? Yeah. Is that the pronunciation? Yeah. Um, it's not a description if you're vibrato or... <laughs> that's right, yeah. Gigli vibrato. <laughs> Um, this, uh, it's, it's a beautiful instrument. It's made in 1789. Okay. And I've had it for about a week. A week. And it's been fun. First concert was yesterday with you. Yeah, so like first time to actually try it out exactly. in front of people. Yeah. So yeah. where are you like in this process with cellos then? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, about, about maybe six months ago, uh, I was feeling very frustrated with my current instrument. It's a beautiful instrument. It's made by Richard Tobin in 1820. That's a, um, an English maker. An English maker. And yeah. he was Irish, living in England. Uh -huh. And I, I loved the instrument. It was very, you know, had a beautiful projecting sound. But there were a lot of times when I felt like it wasn't really giving me everything that I wanted out mm -hmm. of it. Like it wasn't it wasn't projecting the way that I wanted to throughout the whole range of the instrument, yeah. especially in the mid range and the bottom. And so I began this search essentially. And so I, I played a Niccolo Galliano for, uh, for about six months and then now just a week with this instrument. And I mean, the search is still on and yeah. hopefully securing a sponsor for this, you know, and, and that's always a, a tough process as you know. So you mean um, some, somebody to purchase the instrument and loan it to you? Exactly. Yeah, and, exactly. Let, and let you play it yeah. um, for, for kind of long-term usage. And um, I, you know, it's funny, I, I was in a similar process myself mm. with an English instrument. I had an English viola and yeah. as we were kind of talking about a little that's bit right. about it, um, I, personally, I felt like there was something more that I wanted. Yeah, and yeah. and that's kind of exactly where where you are. And I, I just you know hoped and wished and and, yeah, and yeah. dreamt about you know an instrument that would um, kind of satisfy all those those cravings and yeah and yeah. That's, what, that's what, you're what you're imagining right like what what you what you want out of your art and like when we're not getting it it can be so frustrating right? yeah like it's just very. Um, and it allows you to the, then start a, something, a search in some, in some ways. Yeah. Would you say you're happy with your current? Oh, I love it. Um, yeah. yeah. And so like right now you're, you're in this like call out to the universe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? exactly. No, yeah. exactly. And I, maybe this yeah. is the instrument that you'll spend your life with or, a, you Who know, knows? a significant Who knows? You know, part of your, your concert career or, you know. Who knows? Yeah. It's, it's, I, I love this, this kind of like, yeah. you know, point in time. Yeah. Um, it's, tell me, it's a little scary though. <laughs> at the it's same scary, time, right? Like, it's yeah. a little bit, yeah. The, in, the a little un uneasy, yeah. Um, but but it is a beautiful instrument. And you still have your your English cello. I still have the English cello, and uh, so you know, if all else fails, I can still play that. But um, yeah, it's it's now sitting at Teresio right now. Yeah, <laughs> chilling, having a break. <laughs> it's it's yeah. on. Yeah, just decompressing after all that. Exactly. All that yeah. Tommy. After, after all the abuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah, t tell me maybe what you're looking for in, in cello. I'm curious. Yeah, um, the, the process has been interesting because I, I didn't, you know, I played that cello for 15 years, mm -hmm. the Tobin, and I got very used to the sound, very used to this kind of brash kind of trumpet quality. and Which is so unusual for an English instrument. Which is unusual, right? Yeah, yeah. it's usually more mellow. Um, but this cello, I, I mean, I, I absolutely... I loved that kind of sound and I fell in love with that kind of sound and that that's my upbringing essentially you know like I, I got it about three years into playing the cello 
And oh, wow. So my whole sound world has grown up around the Tobin. Yeah. And so everything that I want out of an instrument in some ways is influenced, in, well, in, in most ways, is influenced by that original conception of what I want yeah. out of an instrument. And so, you know, I just got, got a good you got, you got attacked uh, by me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, wow. <laughs> All that hairspray. Um, no, the, uh, the instrument is, that's the sound that I want, the tone quality. And so it got to the point, though, where I felt, uh, I felt like I was going to injure myself trying to get the sound that I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the sound that I want is still that same kind of quality that's projecting very direct quality rather than kind of mellow and subdued. I'm looking for something that really like, that really has that brightness that can project over an orchestra. That's what I'm doing most of the time these days is playing over an orchestra. Concertos and yeah, yeah that sort of thing. And, and which is like, I, I just need that. And mm -hmm. it works out that, you know, I also grew up with that conception in my mind, the Tobin being very bright. And so this instrument actually does have that. Yeah. I will say the Niccolo Galliano didn't have that as much, but it was a different kind of projection. It almost felt like it wasn't projecting under your ear, but I had lots of feedback that it actually was. It can, be, it can be confusing, right? Yeah. yeah. How, how it sounds up to, uh, close up exactly. versus yeah. what's actually happening in, at distance yep. in a concert hall. Yeah, under the ear, it could be completely different from yeah. what people are hearing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, so how long do you think you might be playing something like this before you... I mean, it's, it's hard to yeah. say, right? It is hard to but say. Um, for now, I'm, I'm definitely committing to two months of playing this yeah. instrument, which graciously, you know, Carlos at Teresa has, has let me uh, do this, uh, you know, play this instrument for that long. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm super excited about it. You know, I, I feel already from the concert that we played yesterday, yeah. that I, I feel like I'm starting to understand what it likes, what it doesn't like. And uh, in live time, yeah, it's like, like it's like a first date. <laughs> it totally is. <laughs> You've got that glow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> let's put a wig on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's fun. It's fun in the beginning for sure. Yeah. Um, so after that first concert, are, are there things that that surprised you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, my, my first impressions of the instrument were that the top range is very intense and and very bright that kind of quality that i love then there's this middle range that's still incredible and still very direct and the bottom of the instrument the the c and the g feels a little bit like it's it's resisting mm -hmm. my the actions that i'm doing but in reality i think especially in the concert that we played last night i realized in a hall actually I don't have to work that hard to play hmm. the lower range because it's giving a lot of sound but for some reason maybe similar to the Galliano it it doesn't sound like it under the ear yeah and so I mean I I, I don't know I will see I'm, I'm gonna keep we have a concert tomorrow so yeah hopefully I'll keep this in a different space in a different space yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and and so it's also different applications because this is chamber music versus exactly. uh, a concerto or a recital yep uh, with a piano so yeah um, that, that's that's it's a, a fascinating journey yeah. to be embarking on. It is. Um, yeah. For those of us who don't know, Jiggly Jiggly Jiggly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, what do you know about this maker? I honestly don't know anything else other than I love the name. <laughs> like literally, <laughs> like I mean, I know I know he worked next to Teckler, uh -huh. um, well-known maker. Um, beautiful cellos. A lot of wonderful cellists have cellos by Teckler. Um, a little bit younger than Teckler, and uh -huh. they worked side by side at, at a certain point. Uh, and this was in Rome. In Rome, yeah. yeah. Um, and Roman cellos, I honestly don't know much about them. Mm -hmm. I know Carlos was telling me a little bit about them, and uh, they're very sought after. Yeah. Very sought after makers in Italy. I mean, I, I didn't know much about it. I know the name Teckler. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the name Gigli, but you, of course, you told me, you know, Brooks Belts plays one. Yeah. And I, I didn't know that. And like, it's a beautiful, this is Nicholas Alstead's old instrument that yeah. I'm holding right here. Oh, and wow. And so, you know, he, maybe he, he made this a little more famous than it was before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, have, you, have you given him a call? I have not. Are you going to? I'm going to call him and I'm going to ask him, hey, how do you play this instrument? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You sound really great. Why don't I sound great? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, actually, that, that, that is a very interesting question, though. Like, yeah. you know, what has been your journey with this instrument, mm. and and why why did you choose these strings or mm. like this setup, right? Yeah, yeah. If that's, that's if that's if this is something that you end up pursuing, I, yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, at a certain point, I probably will email him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a little that's conversation. Fascinating. Yeah. Would you mind playing a little bit so we can sure. hear? Sure. Thanks. I'm all ready. <laughs>